I just realized something. I'm the only tech YouTuber, I think, who hasn't made a video about AI. So let's put that right. WWDC is just around the corner, which means finally we'll have some proper non-rumor Apple news to talk about. Although at the moment, there's still nothing to talk about. So I thought, why not satisfy the massive thirst for AI content and hopefully Apple content by combining the two. What I thought I'd do is take Bard, which is Google's ChatGPT competitor, it's their generative AI tool, and ask it about the iPhone. I've got nothing else to say about the iPhone. Let's just see what Google's AI Bard thing thinks of it. Although before I do that, just a very quick word from today's sponsor, which is Keisuku, and their lovely magic stand case for the iPhone. Now this is a fantastic case in its own right. It only adds two millimeters to your iPhone. It comes in loads of different colors, including this lovely silver slash see-through version that I have here. It's still compatible with MagSafe because there is a 48 piece magnet structure built into this, but there's also this. And this turns the case into a stand, which you can either place horizontally if you're watching stuff during your lunch break, or vertically if you're pretending to work out on the floor of your studio. The stand part of this, so this little mechanism here, is rated to 30,000 openings. So you've got no worries about durability, and it also goes from 40 to 120 degrees. As I always say, this is one of those accessories that you don't know you need until you try it. And the best news is, I've worked with Keisuku to get you a 10% discount, and they take Klarna now as a payment method. So to find out more about the magic stand case for the iPhone, just click that link. Okay, so the first question that I asked Bard was, what do only iPhone owners know? And as is always the case with AI, that first question normally draws out the most boring answers. So it's stuff like how to activate Siri by saying, hey, how to use Apple Pay to make payments in stores online. It's basically taken that question, what do only iPhone owners know, and answered very literally. That's still fairly boring though, and if you're still watching this video, thank you so much. So instead, I asked, give me 10 things only iPhone owners know about the iPhone, and make it tongue in cheek and amusing. Now I've not read the responses here, so let's just react straight away to them. Number one, you can use the force touch feature to get a preview of links, images, and other items on the screen, but only if you're not wearing gloves. I know ChatGPT is only aware of stuff up until about 1975 or something, but as far as Bard is concerned, I thought it would be a little bit more up to speed with what's going on because force touch doesn't exist anymore. More specifically, it doesn't exist on the latest iPhones. I can't remember when they abandoned force touch, let me know in the comments if you know the answer to that question. I do miss it though. I used to love Force Touch. It was a really useful feature, but uh, yeah, according to Bard, it's still very much a thing. Number two, you can quickly switch between apps by double tapping the home button, but only if you're not using a case. Again, the home button, in fact, there's only one iPhone that remains with the home button, which is the iPhone SE. So again, that's fairly outdated information, but only if you're not using a case. Cases never got in the way of the home button, did they? Did they? You've lost me there, Bard. At number three, you can take a screenshot by pressing the home button and the sleep wake button at the same time, but only if you don't mind taking a picture of your hand in the process. I'm thinking back to, you know, 1984, when we used to have home buttons on iPhones, and the home button's at the bottom, well, it was at the bottom, the camera's up here, here? I mean, ha Bard, how were you taking photos with your iPhone? Were you doing it like this? Number four, you can activate Siri by saying, hey, or pressing the home button, but only if you don't mind waking up the entire household in the process. You don't have to shout, hey, that loud, or maybe this is Google poking fun at Siri, and to be completely fair, I agree. If you've been following my journey with the HomePod and Siri at home, you'll know that I'm not particularly impressed. So I think Bard has a point here. Do I shout at Siri at home? Yeah, we do. We shout at Siri quite a lot, so it would wake up the entire household just to get it working, yeah. Number five, you can use Apple Pay to make payments in store and online, but only if you're not afraid of being judged by the cashier, wow. So we've had Apple Pay and contactless payments in the UK for a long time. It's been second nature for, for ages, really. So I've never felt judged by the cashier when using my 
phone or my Apple Watch to, to pay for stuff. I have cracked out the occasional joke of, it's just like free money, isn't it? <laughs> Ding, you know, which isn't that funny to be honest, but I've never felt judged, really. Have you ever felt judged using Apple Pay? Maybe it's the stuff you're buying, Bard. Perhaps that is the thing you're being judged on. Number six, you can customise the look and feel of your iPhone with different wallpapers, ringtones and other settings, but only if you don't mind spending hours trying to find the perfect combination. Again, this might be a bit of shade thrown at the iPhone because, let's be honest, iOS versus Android, when it comes to customization, Android has always been a step ahead. Android has always had better wallpaper support, customization in terms of widgets. I prefer the lock screen on Android still, and it's taken iOS quite a while to make the iPhone more customizable. That said, I've never spent hours trying to find the right combination of wallpapers, ringtones, it's not 1993 guys, and other settings. So, number seven, you can troubleshoot common problems such as a frozen phone or a dead battery, but only if you're not afraid of bricking your device in the process. Now, I do take issue with this because iPhones don't really crash. When was the last time you your iPhone froze. And just to add some balance to that, I can't remember the last time an Android phone froze on me either. As for troubleshooting a dead battery, you just plug it in. Number eight, you can get the most out of your iPhone by using all of its features and apps, but only if you have a lot of time and patience. Ooh. That stings. I get the feeling as this list goes on, Bard is getting a little bit more tetchy about the iPhone. I love it. Number nine, you have access to a wide range of exclusive features and apps, such as iMessage, FaceTime, and Apple Music. Here comes the but, but only if you're willing to pay for them. So you pay for Apple Music, you don't pay for FaceTime, and you don't pay for iMessage. That's just completely inaccurate. We're getting to the stage now, I think, where Bard has had one too many drinks. If you're still watching, you'll be glad to know we've reached number 10, which is you're part of a community of iPhone users who share tips and tricks and support each other. Nice. But only if you can handle the constant stream of Apple fanboyism. I was waiting for the word fanboy to come out and there it is. And just to sign off before it stumbles out of the pub and into its taxi, Bard says, I hope you enjoyed these tongue in cheek and amusing facts about the iPhone. Facts. So there you go, that's the 10 things Bard thinks that only iPhone owners know about owning an iPhone. I'll be honest with you guys, I have no idea why I made this video, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it has sparked some good-natured bants in the comments section. Also, if you've still got some time and you want to see what my final verdict is on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, keep watching for a link to that video.